screencast, which is going to go over both uh, symbolic and graphical notation that we're going to be using in the class. Let's start off with what you've seen before. Um, we have I, the interest rate. Um, the interest rate will normally be expressed in the uh, same units as our timestamps. So if we're talking about some things that are three months in the future, the interest rate will commonly be a monthly interest rate. If we're talking about things which are years in the future, the interest rate will commonly be an annual rate. Later on, I'll show you how to convert from one to the other when we're doing uh, some interesting things with loans. The next thing that you've seen is P, which stands for the uh, present value at time period zero. You can think of this as the amount of money that you would be willing to accept now in exchange for this val these values that are hiding out there in the future. In other words, if someone goes ahead and offers you, say, $120 a year from now, and you're willing to take about 80 for it, that would be the present value of that money that's out there in the future. The F that you've seen before is quite similar. That is... Um, or can be thought of as the uh, amount of money that you'd have in the account after you made a deposit. So if you think about it, P is what you have to start with in the account in order to get F at time period N. Uh, alternately, it would be the amount of money that you'd be willing to give up in time period N for that stream of benefits leading up to it. And then finally, cap in is the last period that's there. Now, we can add a couple others immediately. We can also add you a, a little in here, which is just some arbitrary time. Now, associated with this, there's also a graphical uh, language. Uh, and so we'll start off with a arrow of time that's through here. And time starts over here at the left, goes over here on the right. And we'll have little mark on it that will indicate time period zero. Now, here's a, a subtle thing about our notation, is that time starts at period zero. It doesn't start at period one. Now, this just basically makes the math a lot simpler. You don't have any spare negative ones hanging around, but it makes for the possibility of a lot of off by one errors. So always remember that the first period is period zero. And I'll modify my language to make it easy to remember. So I always talk about things in terms of now, meaning period zero, period one, period two, period three. I will generally don't talk about the first period, the second period, and the third period, because that's so confusing. So here we have our period zero. And then way out over here is our all sorts of other ones that are hanging around there. Now, we get to go ahead and depict costs and benefits in the future by little vectors that are extending up from here. And so here's a positive value. Here's a negative value. Here's a large positive value. We should go ahead and straighten that one out a little bit. And uh, here's a large negative value. And the idea is that positive values indicate benefits to you. Negative values indicate cost to you. Uh, the magnitude of these vectors indicates the magnitude of the cost or benefits that are coming your way. Now, associated with those are the actual values these represent. And those are usually depicted as uh, uh, A sub the time period that's there. I put a few of those in, and please note it's hard to do subscripts on this. Um, but that is the benefit you would receive in time period one. That's A sub one. The cost that you incur in time period two is A sub two, and so on down the line. And I'll add this to the notation over here. Now the notation continues to expand because we are going to have a series of common forms that you're going to see out there. Um, and these common forms are common patterns that you are, um, will see all the time in your problems. And the idea, our general methodology, is to take complex problems, break it up into smaller pieces that you can analyze individually, and then reassemble the solutions. Now, this is something that you do all over the place. It's a very common kind of methodology to use. And we're just going to go ahead and use it here. So let's start working our way through some of these common patterns. Now, I'll knock these common patterns out pretty quickly in order to get the notation down. Then we'll discuss them in greater detail later on. And so I'm going to eliminate this uh, cash flow diagram right here in order to clear some space for the, uh, the actual common patterns. 
Now, here's the quick overview of the patterns, starting off with the singletons, which we've been dealing with um, with our uh, simple examples here. But we also have this constant series, which is also called the equal series. Um, and what we're saying is, is that for all time periods 1 through cap n, they share the same value that's there. It's an absolute constant. Uh, and we can see this in things like um, loans, uh, the payments of loans, and such like that. We're also going to have this tricky little series that's called the linear gradient series, where each time period, the benefit that you get changes by the same fixed amount. Um, we'll go ahead and see this mostly in exam questions because there are some tricky businesses associated with it. But it introduces this new uh, bit of notation here as cap G, which is the amount of change that you'll see in a linear gradient series. We also have a similar geometric gradient series, which increases uh, by a certain percentage amount, instead of a dollar amount. And then we have this other irregular series that's around here. We'll head these in much greater detail, starting off, of course, with that equal payment series. Now, I've tried to create a constant series here. It's probably the sloppiest thing you've ever seen. Uh, the intent is to have each of these be exactly the same height. And so what we have here is a constant series where in each period from 1 through 5, where 5 is the cap n, you're receiving the same uniform benefit A. And this is all this is reading as in each period from uh, n going from 1 to cap n, you're receiving the same benefit. Please note in the constant series, you receive no cost or benefits in period 0. It's one of the assumptions that we have there. Now, I can go ahead and add that A down over here in our notation so that A is the constant benefit seen in periods 1 through N in a constant series. Now, our next series is going to be the linear gradient series. And that's the one that steps up by a fixed dollar amount every single period. And I'll be putting that drawing in right now. Now we have here the linear gradient series. Now, the idea with this one is it goes up, say, $10 per period. The key feature here is in period 0 and period 1, there is no cost or benefit, and after that, it goes up by cap G. So, for example, this could be nothing here in period 1. Period 2 could be you receive $10. Period 3, you receive $20. Period 4, you receive $30. Period 5, you receive $40, and that's the last period that's there for you. So we'll go ahead and put over here, cap G is the per period increase or per period change in benefit in a linear gradient series. So I've added that symbolic notation over there and also put in the little assumption here that remember that in period one, it's assumed that your cost or benefit is going to be zero. So that's not supposed to have anything interesting there. Now, the next one of our common forms is going to be the geometric gradient series. And this is the one that goes up by a certain percentage amount every single period. And so I'll go ahead and scroll that one in. So I've now put in a uh, geometric gradient series. Uh, geometric series, it starts off with something in period one, but please note, nothing here in period zero. And then it grows by a certain percentage amount. In this case, what I've done is I've had it grow by about 100%. So what I have here in period two is double the benefit in period one. What I have in three is double the, period, the benefit in period two. The four is double the three, and so on down the line. And so this would be something here like a, the G would be one. And you see this uh, a lot if you're putting in kind of uh, inflation accelerators in contracts and such. And again, this is one of those common forms that we're going to see. And I'll go ahead and put over here as that lowercase g is the growth or percent change in costs or benefits in a geometric gradient series. Now, the final series is a residual series. Um, it's an irregular one, which is just uh, something that you can't quite categorize. So if you add to it the singleton we saw before and these three others, you have the common patterns that we're going to see and actually study in this course. So what we're going to be doing next is looking at a couple of ways of uh, assaulting this constant series here, finding out how to calculate the present worth, the future value by three or four different methods, depending upon how you count.